How's it going there, YouTube? I am back, and also Happy New Year to you guys. So, in the words of Dragon Ball Z Braves Vegeta, I'm back, bitches! Yep, that's right. With school finally done, and I'm sorry for you guys that if you've been waiting for another review, it has been a, a, a long time before I actually wanted to do another review. Because originally I thought I... I just want to be able to get the balls. Okay, gotta edit that out. Anyways, how we just get right, right to the nitty gritty is why you guys are here. So, 2018 is done, and of course, it means we have to look at some of these movies that made a big impact during that year. So. What sounds first to you guys that I might want to do? How about something that DC surprises all with with this one? Just by the title, you'll probably know what we're going to do. Aquaman. Aquaman to me was really well done. I actually really enjoyed it. It brought a new side of what you can expect from DC films. They brought some comedy, they brought some really, really well-known actors, especially Jason Momoa. He did a great, absolutely fantastic job as the character. Because originally, we only saw him in the uh, Justice League film when he was officially named Aquaman, but this one Kind of, I couldn't really tell the continuity with it. I mean, I wanted to believe that it was a prequel to the uh, an origin story for Aquaman before he went to Justice League. But I, uh, no, they didn't really mention it at all in the film. Either way, it's, I still enjoyed it, no matter how much of the continuity error it had. Jason Momoa did a really well done job as the character, besides working with some of his, some of the actors, like <laughs> the actress who played uh, Mara. I have to admit, she's a... Uh, the actress is kind of a, a gold digger and a little bit of a... Uh, a little bit of a bee. But she actually performed the character very, very well, more so than we saw her in Justice League. In Justice League we saw her in like five minutes and she was didn't really exist in the movie after that. And then we then we saw the actor who played Orr. Or Orm, right? I can never pronounce that name right. But I'll just say Ocean Master, because that's what people know him as. That actor really brought that this idea of a character who wants to be king and wants to get his way. And of course, they gave us the uh, infamous Black Manta. And I was absolutely astonished with his design. It was really creative in how they got the uh, the eyes right and also the uh, the big old helmets because he always had to wear a big helmet. And just the idea of the character was really good. They got the blades for his arms, they got the jetpack for the suit, and just everything they wanted to capture the identity of the comics. Especially when we were talking about Jason Momoa, they actually got him in the original Aquaman suit. No, I'm not talking about that one. I'm talking about this one. This one was like, oh boy. Very, very well done. It just gave us, gave the fans what we expected to see. A fun, exciting ride. And this was something different that James Wan was, was doing because Originally, this director, he's a horror director. He's done things like The Conjuring, The Nun, Annabelle. This was his first take of doing a comic book movie. And I have to say, he really, he really set the bar high. And it, of course, the, uh, the effects were really well done. The underwater scenes on how the actor's hair and like their makeup and everything else, how it actually would look like if they were talking underwater. Some of it was 
a little bit uh, rushed, and you, you can probably tell when you're watching it, maybe for a second time. But when I saw it for the first time, I saw it in IMAX. Not 3D, I don't really do 3D, I just saw it in the IMAX theater. I just was astonished by the amount of technology and how far it's come. It's just really amazing how we were able to do these scenes now. So either way, Aquaman really, he's, it's, it's nailing the box office. It's like first right now in the last two weeks since it came out. So right now, it, this is a step in the right direction for DC. And I, I'll be honest, it's, I'm actually a fan of Aquaman now. After watching this movie, I mean, I wasn't really the biggest fan of him when I was reading the comics because I didn't really knew he existed in the comics. And always he was treated as the uh, a lesser known character in most of the incarnations, like some of the certain TV shows, like they didn't really use him a lot. But this one, I definitely have high hopes for this, for the future of DC. I mean, granted, I'm not really interested in seeing Shazam. I'm sorry, it's just, there comes to a point when they're just pushing too much comedy into a character. I mean, yes, Billy Batson is supposed to be the comic relief of DC, but with the rate DC's going, they kind of already did that with Ezra Miller's Flash in Justice League. So, I mean, just, who knows, maybe it'll be good, maybe it won't, I'm not sure, but Aquaman and Wonder Woman, these two films are what is needed for DC to do. You don't have to copy Marvel, you don't have to try and play catch up with their movies, because if you can see, you already have like your Batman vs Superman, Suicide Squad, and Justice League were your three biggest bombs you've had. And you've had like what six films? These are like two out of six. You're in. You're going the right direction. This is where you're going. So, hopefully, hopefully this gets out to everyone that Aquaman is a really fun film. It's really well done. It's a great family film. Good for the comic book lovers. And so it comes for the final verdict. With the amount of uh, problems, I I didn't really half of the film, I wasn't also like ecstatic to go see it. I do have to say, Aquaman is a it's a B plus film. It really is. It's a high B. Because there's a lot of more stuff they could have done. I mean, Black Manta was, wasn't really in the movie that much. They could have used him a little bit more. They could have had a little bit more interactions with the uh, with Orm and his brother. And of course they could have like fixed a little bit of the audio. The audio d was kind of peaking a little bit. I couldn't really tell the first few minutes, but then I saw a little more of the underwater scenes. Just the way they talked underwater, it was kind of, it was a little too high pitched. They could have level, lowered the volume a little bit. But either way, it was a really well done film. And that's what I, what I have to say. So, again, guys, thank you so much for your patience and really thank you for coming back to seeing this review. And I promise I will try and get at least, I plan to do like three reviews. Like I, I will do Spider-Verse, I will do Bumblebee. I might do Mortal Engines, I might not, we'll see what happens. But I still also want to get like another anime review and I also want to get my very first video game review out. So either way, thanks a lot you guys. Be ready to smash the like button in the face like the badasses you are. And you can click subscribe for more future videos or do it right now. Enjoys in the shadows. I'm the Dark Viewer, guys, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace. You